Hi, my name is Faraz Hussain, I'm one of the orthopedic consultants here at the RRH uh, and I specialise in shoulder and knee surgery. And what we're going to be doing is uh, going through a simple knee examination for the medical students, uh, try and keeping it basic uh, and just focusing on the stuff you need for the exam. We have a patient here um, and the first thing you do with any examination is introduce yourself and ask permission uh, if you can examine them. So hi, my name is Faraz Hussain, nice to meet you. Uh, do you mind if I examine you? OK, now in the exam, what tends to happen is you start off with the patient in the seat and the first thing you do is ask them to stand and make sure you've got adequate exposure. Um, and what you're looking for is to make sure they're not wearing shoes and socks and that you can see the quads as well as the knee. So, Sarah, can I ask you to stand up for me and just face the camera there? Um, and the first thing you're doing is looking from the front um, <coughs> and you're looking at to see if there's any quads wasting. Um, looking at the uh, kneecaps themselves uh, to see if they're pointing forwards. Uh, in certain cases you do get the kneecaps pointing inwards and it's worth commenting on that. You're also looking for any swelling around the knee, uh, either below the patella or uh, above uh, in this area here. Um, it's worth at this point just looking at the alignment as well, whether there's any valgus or varus uh, malalignment of the knee. And as you can see here, Sarah's got a slight valgus alignment, probably around about four or five degrees, which is within normal limits. Um, now, really demonstrate to the examiner you're getting right the way in there and you're looking to see if there's any scars um, or any lesions um, from previous surgery. Now, this is the typical places where you get um, scars from, from arthroscopies or a longitudinal scar from, from more major surgery. Um, look at, make sure you look at the feet as well, um, and that's important um, to see if she's got any uh, dropped medial arches, any pronation of her feet, or any valgus deformity of her toes, because that can uh, affect her patella alignment. Um, I'm then going to ask to, uh, to turn to the side, so if I can get you to face that way. And what you're doing now is looking from the side to look to see if she is fully bracing back her knees, if there is any fixed flexion deformity. Can I get you to face the other way as well? Now, Sarah's uh, got a problem with the right knee, but it's important to look at a normal knee as well, uh, on the left knee. And again, she's got quite a straight alignment. Can I get you to face the back wall? And also go round to the back of the patient. Um, and what we're looking from at the back is if there's any wasting to her, her hamstrings, her calves, and looking to see if there's any soft tissue swellings around the back of the knee or any scars. Um, those all appear normal. Again, it's worth commenting on the feet, making sure there's no valgus or varus deformity of her feet. And Sarah here has quite straight uh, heels, which are underneath the uh, talus. So, once you've completed your uh, looking, the next thing is to do um, is to look at the gait. So we're going to ask Sarah to walk next. We're now moving on to the gait part of the examination uh, and we're going to ask Sarah to walk up and down for us. Um, if she has any walking aids, uh, you need to ask her to use that. Um, and if she's able to, uh, to walk without uh, a stick or crutches if possible um, to see what the gait pattern is like that. Typically, uh, the phases of the gait cycle are a stance phase which is when the foot is in contact with the ground and the swing phase as it's swinging through uh, without contact. So Sarah if I can ask you to, to move forward for me uh, and just walk normally um, and you ask them to walk at their normal pace uh, and the things that you're looking for are her stride rank, length, her cadence, but you're also looking for um, a foot progression angle I and mean, you're looking to see uh, at what angle her foot makes when it hits the ground. Typically, um, Sarah's are pointing forward, which is normal, but you can get in certain situations where the foot is turned outwards uh, or inwards. Also, um, look for uh, whether she has an antalgic gait, and this is where um, Sarah can demonstrate um, where, where she has a problem in her right knee, and what she's doing here is she's reducing the stance phase of a cycle, uh, i.e. she's trying to keep uh, her weight off that leg uh, as much as possible. Um, if I can ask you to walk normally again, um, uh, typically with ligament uh, issues you can get uh, what's called a thrust in the knee. Uh, this is uh, where when she's putting weight on that leg uh, the knee goes into a varus uh, deformity uh, and you f see the knee give every time she puts weight on it. Um, once you've completed this, uh, we then ask her to pop up onto the couch uh, for further examination. 
We're now going on to the examination on the couch. So we've got the patient on the couch. Um, and the first thing to do, which is very important, is to ask again if the knee's painful or if she has any specific tender spots. So you, have you got any pain in your knee? No. OK, fine. We're going to be focusing on the right knee, but all these tests should be done on both sides, starting off with the normal knee on the left side. Um, so the first thing to do is to look, uh, and the sequence is to look, feel and move. We've got adequate exposure here. Um, and when we're looking, again, we're looking very closely to see if there's any scars around the knee. Um, you're looking for any obvious swelling over either part of the knee. You're looking for any quadriceps wasting um, and if any skin changes uh, in the limb lower down. You can assess the quads further by asking them just to push their knees back down into the, into the bed. And you can see the quads contract there um, quite nicely. If you're going to formally assess the um, size of the quads, uh, you take a fixed point on both sides, typically the tibial tuberosity, have equal measures on both sides, uh, and just measure the circumference of the quads. Uh, what I typically do is ask them to push down uh, the knees down into the bed and just feel the quads and just see if there is any obvious wasting there. Just relax. <coughs> Going on to uh, feel, um, you start off with temperature. Uh, and just checking to see if there's any temperature changes over there uh, or uh, looking to see if there's any erythema around that area. Um, going on to effusion, now there's a couple of tests for uh, an effusion. Now the joint capsule starts about four finger breaths above the top of the patella and what we're doing is we're going to try and sweep the fluid down into the knee so we can see it and the area you're looking for is just medial to the patella so we're um, sweeping the fluid down and then trying to sweep it from the lateral side to the medial side. So you empty out the medial gutter, sweep the fluid from the lateral to the medial side. You can also do a patella tap, um, which works well with moderate to large effusions, but isn't such a good test for small effusions. So we're sweeping the fluid down from the top and just pushing the patella down onto the trochlear uh, to see if you can feel a tap there. Tenderness in the anterior compartment can be assessed in the extended knee. Uh, and what I do here is just feeling for any tenderness over the quadriceps, uh, over its insertion at the superior pole of the patella, where you can get tenderness with a jumper's knee. Over the patella itself, patella tendon, and over the tibial tuberosity. So you felt uh, in the extended position. I then asked them to flex up to 90 degrees on both sides. And what we look at, well, first of all, you look, and what we're looking for here is if she's got a posterior sag. So you get the, the, the feet and ankle at the same level, and you look from the side, and you demonstrate to the examiner what you're doing, um, and you're looking for the side to see if there's any um, sag back, i.e. the tibia has moved back on the femur. You can demonstrate that with a piece of paper um, and just compare the two sides to make sure everything's lined up uh, and it's a straight line. You can palpate for that as well and you place your thumbs over the tibia uh, and over the femur and just feel if there is what's called a step off which you get typically with a PCL injury. Um, palpation of the joint line is done at 90 degrees um, so that the, um, uh, the, the tendons are out of the way and the joint line is exposed. Um, I typically start on, on the, the lateral side um, and you feel for this bony prominence here which is girdis tubercle with it, which is where the ileal tubercle band inserts. And as you place your finger just above that, you immediately go into the lateral joint margin. Um, when you're examining anyone, always keep glancing at their face and make sure that they're not uncomfortable when you're doing that. Um, feel across, around from the lateral side, right around the medial side, uh, over the um, medial um, collateral ligament, and also f just feel around the back of the knee as well. Make sure there's no tenderness there. Is that tender at all? No. No. Okay. Fine. Um, just the normal side as well as the abnormal side. Um, as well as feeling around the joint margin, you can also feel the femoral condyles here. Um, just above the joint margin, you just feel if there's any tenderness over the lateral femoral condyle and over the medial femoral condyle as well. Now that we've felt, we're going to go on to move the knees, um, going back into the extended position as well, and we're just making sure that our knees are getting fully straight. So you can place your hands underneath and make sure our knees are fully straight. Um, and you can, uh, first of all, start off to, to check if she's got a fixed flexion. Now, this is checking whether she has any um, block to her extension, i.e. a passive uh, test. So placing your hand on the knee, see how far she can fully extend, always looking at her face while you're doing that. And you can assess that further to see how far the heel will lift off and see if you can get her fingers underneath. Looking for an extensor lag, which is where 
she has, she's able to passively extend her knee, um, but she has an issue with her cordyceps wasting and she's, she has some weakness in extension. And the way to do that is to just get her to flex her knees up slightly, place your arm underneath and ask them to straighten their knees out on either side. And you can see that she is fully extending her knees without any problems. And you can observe what her quads are like when you're doing that as well. We'll then go on to flexion and get, get you to bend both your knees up. We do that actively and passively, so we start off with an active flexion. So just show me how far you can bend your knees up on this side as well. And passively, we're just going to bend them up as far as we can. Make sure you look at the patient when you do this because it can cause them some discomfort. Um, and you compare the two sides and, make and you can comment on uh, how the distance between the buttock and the heel. Uh, as well as the flexion angle. Now, this is when the knee is flexed to 90 degrees. Um, this is up to about 100, and 120 can get her up to 130. We now move on, move on to special tests, and what we're looking for here uh, is any ligament issues within the knee, or if she has a varus of valgus deformity, whether that's correctable. So starting off with the collateral ligaments, um, we're going to start off with the medial collateral ligaments. Now, hand positioning is important here, um, and to assess the medial collateral ligament, what you're doing is having the knee in slight flexion, uh, about 20 degrees. I typically would start on the normal side, um, but for these purposes, we're just going to do the right knee. And what I'm doing is here is putting a valgus stress on the knee and seeing how much movement we have there. And she's opening up around a millimeter, uh, but there's a nice firm end point, and you do that in both 20 degrees of flexion and full extension. In full extension, she's tightened up quite nicely, and what happens in full extension is the secondary restraints come in, uh, and the posterior capsule is tightened up. With a lateral collateral ligament, you can either swap your hands over this way, um, or you can have your leg in this position, and you're assessing the lateral collateral ligament on either side, uh, uh, on the lateral side, applying a varus uh, force this time. Um, going on to the ACL, um, the exam here is the, the, the test to do here is a Lachman's test. Now this is quite a difficult test to do, um, but it's all down to hand positioning and, and the direction in which you're trying to move the tibia. And the idea is to move the tibia forward on the femur. So the left hand is placed over, just supporting the femur. The right hand actually the hand goes around the back of the tibia and what you're trying to do is to pull the tibia forward on the femur. Now Sarah hasn't got much laxity there. Again, it's quite, it sometimes can be a painful test, so just check with the patient, make sure it's not painful. It's important to be empathetic when you're examining the patient. Is that painful at all? No, it's fine. Okay, fine. And you can see it's not moving forward at all. A lot of people find this difficult, especially if you've got small hands. And one way of doing it is just to pop your knee on the, on the couch, um, Rest the knee over it, um, push down the femur onto your knee so it's stabilising it, put your hand around in the same position and try and pull the tibia forward. Uh, and some people find that a bit easier. Um, so we've checked the PCL, the ACL and the collateral ligaments. Um, checking for uh, meniscal injuries, a McMurray's test. Um, I wouldn't expect people to do that during the exam because it's a painful test. Um, I'm just going to show you how to do it, but, but I wouldn't advise you to do that during the actual exam itself. So what we're doing is we're having the knee around about 90 degrees flexion. I'm stabilising the top of the femur and I'm rotating the tibia as I'm flexing uh, and extending the knee as I'm applying a varus and valgus force. And what you're trying to do here is if she has a tear to the posterior horn of the meniscus, uh, it's being trapped inside the knee, especially a bucket handle tear to the medial meniscus while you're looking at the patient to see if there is causing them any discomfort. Um, so to complete the examination, I'd also like to examine the hips um, and also say that you'd like to do a neurovascular examination uh, and also examine her ankles and feet. Um, so that's a simple run through. Um, and what we're going to do next is um, I'm just going to demonstrate it at the rate um, and what you typically do in the exam. <laughs>